Hi, my name is Grace Cisna. I'm the CPA on staff of Projection Hub, and today I wanted to take a little time to walk you through our brand new brewery template version 2.5. As you'll notice when you open this template, there are several tabs in this light blue color, just like all of our Excel templates uh, for Projection Hub, and then we have tabs in this light green color on the right. So the tabs in light blue are for inputting your data, um, and on these light blue tabs, you'll see corresponding light blue data or cells in light blue where you're gonna enter your data. And when you fill out all of these cells, the output tabs will populate with your financial data. So you'll have your financial statements in annual and monthly formats here. And you will also have this at a glance tab with some handy graphs and charts related to your financial data. So this template is gonna help you build these financial statements. Um, it's gonna do all the work for you. All you have to do is enter some information in these light blue tabs. So let's jump to the input assumptions tab. And you will see several of these light blue cells on this tab. And there's also data already in these cells. And this data is not industry standards or even suggested balances. Um, it is just the um, example data to show you what we're looking for. So in this tab, you're gonna fill out information related to your company name, projection start date, annual inflation rate for operating expenses, any information about investment that's coming into your business, whether that's personal investment, friends and family, or outside investment. You'll enter the name there, um, the value of the investment, and then the month that it's invested. Anytime you see a month as zero in this model, that means for your opening balance sheet. So something that's happening before you start operating. Um, so you'll see the same thing happen down here in this fixed assets category. Um, this is just indicating that you're purchasing a fixed asset right before you start operating. On this tab, you're also going to fill out any accounts receivable terms. So if you're selling anything, um, on credit or giving credit to your buyers, you can enter accounts receivable terms there. Inventory is entered here, and you'll see you'll enter a beginning balance for inventory, and that can be anything from outside food and drink, that can be um, the hops and yeast, et cetera, for your own beer, whatever it might be, you can enter that here. And then the monthly inventory ending balance as a percentage of next month's sales, um, and that's to keep your inventory moving up and down with your sales. So as your sales increase, your inventory balance will increase, as sales decrease, inventory balance will decrease. You'll enter your fixed assets here. Um, we have some suggested items here, leasehold improvements. If you're improving um, a property that you're leasing, you could also enter a building if you're planning on purchasing one. Um, brewing equipment, furniture and fixtures, kitchen equipment, you might put signage here, point of sale system, um, any big fixed assets that you will be purchasing. Um, if you're doing a food truck or you need a delivery van, all that could go in the fixed assets here and you'll enter their value, the life expectancy in years, and the salvage cost, and all those items will help calculate depreciation. And then month during, um, or purchase month there. And like we said, you can purchase it in month zero, which is for the opening balance sheet. Um, obviously, you could have something purchased in month six. Maybe you plan on expanding um, at some point in the model. The last thing on the input assumptions tab would be loans. So any loans that you are taking out to open up the business, that could be mortgages, that could be um, loans that you're getting from equipment manufacturers, um, construction loans if you're building um, significant leasehold improvements, small business loans. You can enter up to four here um, with their amount, their number of monthly payments, their interest rate, and then the first month that the payments will begin. And note that the model will assume you receive the cash from the loan the month before payments begin. So that's typical, typically the pattern with loans. Um, if you make your first payment in December, that means that you likely received the money from the loan sometime in November. So it's always going to assume here um, for this equipment loan that you received the cash prior to month one. So for month zero or the opening balance sheet. The next tab is newly revamped for our version 2.5. This is the revenue and cost of sales tab. And I developed this tab um, initially several years ago. Um, and then it has improved as we've discussed um, this model with clients. So this has been um, honed and fine-tuned. This has been one of our most popular templates, and so this revenue model has been developed um, in coordination with lots of brewery clients. So at the top here, um, this is new to this version. You can select your tap room slash restaurant layout. So in the old model, we assumed that you had a combo tap room restaurant, um, and discussing with breweries, we realized this is not always the case. Sometimes um, breweries will have other variations here, so they may have a separate tap room and restaurant. So we've got one tap room, um, maybe attached to the brewery and you might open a separate restaurant either on the property or down the street. Um, 
So that is an option there. You might have only a tap room or only a restaurant, um, whatever you'd like to call it. So the combined tap room, restaurant, tap room only, and restaurant only are functionally the same thing. This just means one, um, one area on your property where you serve beer to your um, patrons. Uh, a tap room only, of course, might be beer only, and a restaurant might have food as well. Um, but we give you an option there. So for the combined tap room restaurant, that's the option I'm going to, going to select to walk through this, and then I'll show you what the other variations look like. So for all of those variations, the first thing you need to calculate is your barrel production cost. Um, so when you're producing beer on site, um, you're going to have several inputs that go into that model to calculate your cost of beer. So you can enter those here. Um, we have some as an example, the hops, malt, water, and yeast, and other ingredients. And then any hourly labor, if you want to factor that into the beer cost as well, that can go here. And this is for one batch. Um, and you can determine the batch size here. So in this case, these are 420 gallon batches. And so the model is then going to calculate a cost per gallon based on what you enter in this section here. Once we have that cost per gallon calculated, um, the last piece of beer making is often bottling or putting it in some type of container. And we know for lots of breweries, you can put it into different containers um, depending on um, its purpose. So here we've given you some options, barrel, carton of bottles, or a keg. You can enter crawlers or growlers or whatever it may be. Um, you've got six spaces here to enter different types of containers. And then here we're going to add in the cost of the container packing and labels. Um, for a keg, that might just be the cost of washing the keg. Um, same with the barrel. Washing and relabeling every time because often you will reuse those containers. The bottling cost, that's going to be any cost that it takes to actually get it into the container. So this might be labor, um, this might be an additional machine, um, whatever it costs you to get the beer from the state, the batch state into the container. And then we're going to also have you enter the size in gallons of each container. So a barrel being 31 gallons, pretty standard, and a keg is 15 and a half. Um, for a carton of bottles, Keep in mind, this is the total size in gallons. So for the whole carton, every bottle in there, add that all together to get your size in gallons. The model is then going to calculate your cost of beer. Um, so the total cost of beer, the total cost of the container is going to include um, these costs here. So the bottling costs and the labeling costs. So your total cost of beer is $70.30. That's this 454 times 15.5. Then we add in $10 for the labeling and bottling costs. And then the model also calculates out a cost per ounce, um, and that is going to be used a little lower down in the model. So that is how we calculate our cost of goods sold for beer. And we've worked with several breweries where they um, plan to open up just serving craft beer and then add um, beer production later on. And this model will work for that method as well. So here's our tap room and restaurant revenue and cost of goods sold. So this is the meat of the model where we're calculating out your revenue. So as we've selected the combined tap room restaurant option here, you'll see that this is the tap room and restaurant revenue and cost of goods sold. So first we're going to calculate the capacity of the tap room and restaurant. So you're going to enter the number of seats in the, the space, the average table and party size, the average length of a visit by a customer, the hours open per week, the percent of capacity filled each week. Um, and you'll note that for the first six months, you're going to manually enter this capacity and then and enter a growth rate. So it will grow over time. Um, so in this model, we have high capacity. Um, it's being filled early in the model, and then it drops off over time, and then it will eventually build. And keep in mind, this percentage of capacity is for total open hours. Um, so while you may have 100% capacity at certain times of day, um, you're going to average it out over time So um, and over the week as well. So you may have Saturday nights are packed, but if you're also open on Monday nights and there's only one or two people there, keep in mind that your capacity um, is going to average out to be much lower than 100%, um, especially when a place has just opened. You're also going to enter a max capacity here, so it will never go over, in this case, 90%. Um, and you'll see that's not a problem with this particular version of the model. Um, but if you had something like 80% in month six and it grew over time, it'll max out at whatever percentage you have here. 
Um, and we were recommended keeping this below 100%. It's really, really hard to get a restaurant or a half room at 100% all the time. because There's always going to be uh, space and clearing tables. And, um, you know, you might put four people at a six-person table, et cetera. So then the model is going to calculate the number of tables or parties that you can serve per month based on all the information that you've entered above. And we've added to this model as well, um, given the COVID-19 crisis, um, takeout orders have become common. And so we've given you a little um, ability to enter some takeout orders here as well. So you can set the average number of takeout orders per day, and then it'll grow over time. And then it will calculate your monthly takeout orders based on the per day value. Next, we're gonna calculate the tap room and restaurant menu. So there's a couple pieces to this menu. Um, the first piece is calculating out the cost of house beer um, that is served in your tap room or restaurant. So in order to do this, we're gonna have you enter the types of containers that you use to sell beer in your tap room or restaurant. Um, oftentimes, you're gonna be serving from the barrel or the keg in your um, tap room or restaurant, but it is possible that you may bottle some of your beer, especially some of the smaller batches, um, to serve it that way. So you'll enter up to three different types of containers that you use, and this list is populated from the list that you provide up here. So that's coming from this area here. And then you'll set the percent of sales. So obviously you want this to total 100%. So let's say 40% uh, of beer sales in your tap room are coming from barrels, 50% from bottles, and 10% from kegs. And then the model is going to pull down the cost per ounce for that specific type of container. And that is how we get an average cost per ounce for the beer sold in your tap room. The next portion of this model um, has some pre-filled items in it here and then some items that you can adjust as well. So the pre-filled items are these ones that are not shown in light blue, the house beer, other beer sold on draft, and wine by the bottle, and then cocktails. So these items here are the ones that um, we're gonna calculate their cost by a per ounce value. But for everything on this menu, you're gonna enter an item, enter the average number of purchases per party. So this is per table here. And these are all going to sum up at the bottom. So you'll see on this model here, we have 4.7 items per ticket. So keep in mind, we said our average party size was two up here. And so we have 4.7 items for every party of two, and that's just an average. Um, obviously, if your average party size is five, then your average number of items per ticket is probably something over five, assuming everyone's ordering drinks and food um, and maybe an extra appetizer or something like that. So we're gonna enter um, the different drink items here and then their average price and that is the price to the customer. And that's gonna help us calculate our average cost or sorry, average price, average revenue per party. And then for these top four items, you're gonna enter the ounces in an item and the cost per ounce. Note the house beer cost per ounce is calculated for you. So that is not shown in light blue because that's coming directly from the cell up here. And then we're gonna have the total cost for those items. And then for the items that are not sold by ounce or measured in ounces, um, appetizers, food, costs of beer, cans and bottles, et cetera, um, whatever that may be, you'll enter the, the same thing, the number of purchases per party, the average price, and then skip over this ounce stuff and enter in this light blue column here, the total cost. So for an appetizer here, for example, we're saying every table on average is ordering one appetizer. Um, appetizers cost $8 to the customer and then it costs you $4 to prepare that appetizer. From here, the model's gonna calculate out your revenue. So most of the work is done already. Um, it's gonna pull in this average ticket value based on the number of items sold and their price. Um, so you'll see $31.60 here and that is pulled down here. And then an annual growth rate is used to increase that over time. So maybe your items get more expensive or people order more items over time for whatever reason, that average ticket value, if you have a growth rate here, will be growing over time, which is pretty standard. And we break out the average house beer purchase per ticket separately from the average ticket value um, because we want that to flow through separately on your financial statements as you're a brewery, and we wanna pull the beer sales out separately from the rest of the items. Outside food and drink is gonna be calculated on everything but the house beer cost here. And then we're gonna have the tap room and restaurant house beer revenue here. 
So the revenue is the revenue that you're generating, that's money coming in, and then the cost is money going out. So this is what it costs you to earn that revenue. Um, so the cost of goods sold is coming from this value right here, that column. And again, we pull out the house beer separately, and we give you an annual growth rate. And then we have the cost of food and outside drink that is essentially this 1044 minus the dollar four for the beer, and then that dollar four is pulled down to be the cost of tap room and restaurant house beer sales. At the bottom, we give you just some values um, so you can see what you're producing. So this is the number of barrel units sold based on beer sold in the tap room and restaurant, cartons of bottles, and number of kegs. Um, and this is just for your reference so you can see about how much um, you need to be producing in order to create the sales that we've just done in this model. So that is, we'll talk about wholesale in a second, but first I wanna show you some other options. So that is the combo tap room and restaurant version. Some other options, we could have a tap room only. And if you do a tap room only, you'll note that this is a very similar model. Um, the only difference being that it's just tap room revenue. Um, so these labels are all going to change then. So you'll see cost of tap room food and outside drink as opposed to tap room and restaurant. You could also have a restaurant only. And you'll see this changes again. So that's going to be the restaurant revenue as opposed to the restaurant tap room. And you're going to see the cost of restaurant food and drink, restaurant house beer, et cetera. And then the last option is if you have essentially two different um, locations where you sell your beer. So you have a tap room and then you have a restaurant. Um, so the tap room is going to be entered first. So this is the tap room capacity. Um, all this is going to apply only to the tap room. And then you'll see here, there's an area where you need to unhide for the separate restaurant calculations. So it's in between these two yellow tabs or yellow cells and you'll unhide this and this shows you a separate restaurant model. And so then you'll have the restaurant model here, which is very similar to the model we just talked about. The only difference really being that it's called restaurant instead of tap room. So the things that are going to differ between a restaurant and a tap room, perhaps the size. Um, so your size may be different and the menu might change as well. So you'll note that this menu has appetizers and other foods on it. Um, for a restaurant, you could add things like entrees. Um, desserts, etc. And then if you're doing a tap room only, perhaps you'll take food off um, or maybe only serve appetizers or have a limited food menu there. And it could also be that in a tap room you only sell your own house beer, in which case you could just enter zero for all these other items to show that you're only selling your own house beer in that case. Let's go back to combined tap room restaurant. And you'll see here, this extra area is blacked out. Normally it is hidden, so we're gonna rehide it there. All right, talking about the wholesale revenue and costs. So wholesale is another way that you can sell your beer as a brewery. Um, we're gonna pull down all those different container types that you entered here. And you will enter the wholesale price per unit, so what you plan to sell them for. The cost per unit is pre-filled for you. And then we give you a markup for reference. Once you've entered the price, you're gonna enter um, what you expect to sell as far as containers go for each of the categories that you've entered. Um, note if you see zeros here, that means that you didn't enter six containers. Um, you did something less than six, which is fairly common. Just make sure that you have zeros here as well um, so that we're not counting anything that's not there. So you'll just enter the first six months of sales. And then again, we've got the growth rate after month six. So that's gonna to apply to all six columns here. So you'll see um, if there's 25 barrels sold in month six, it's gonna increase over time. So then the wholesale revenue will be based on this price that you entered and the number of units that you're selling. Wholesale cost of goods sold is based on the cost and the number of units. So that is the revenue and cost of goods sold model, cost of sales model. Um, and that is a huge chunk of this. And then we have just a few tabs left um, for input. But once you've completed this, you've completed the bulk of the model. So the next tab is the input direct labor tab. So in a tap room and a restaurant, you may have lots of hourly employees. And this model um, is revamped for this version of the template. Um, we're gonna enter in the number of hours that you're open every week, uh, make sure that corresponds with the tab before it. Total extra hours worked each week. Um, so that's gonna be opening and closing hours at the beginning and end of the day. And then we also want another percentage of staff present during opening and closing. So a lot of time um, you have just a bare bones staff for those hours. You can enter up to five different types of employees. So this is categories of employees. 
their hourly rate, and then you're going to enter the minimum number of employees at any given time. So um, this would be you always going to have at least two bartenders on staff, at least one host, at least three kitchen staff, at least two servers, etc. And you'll enter an annual raise for them as well. So that's going to assume their hourly rate goes up over time. And then this last column here, this is transactions per hour um, per employee. And this is how we increase our, our number of employees on, um, on hand at any given time. So for the bartenders, we want to have at least two on hand at get any given time. Um, assuming they can each handle about 10 transactions per hour. And you'll see here that the model calculates out your average transactions per hour uh, based on essentially the um, number of customers that you plan on having based on the revenue and cost of sales tab. So if your um, transactions per employee per hour um, goes over 10, it's gonna add another bartender to your staff. Um, so this is just to help labor increase as your revenue increases. That way labor doesn't stay flat over the five years of the model, it increases at a reasonable rate. So we've got a note here that the lower the transactions per employee per hour, the more quickly the model will add new employees. So here um, we have five transactions per hour per kitchen staff. Um, if we went down to one, obviously your kitchen staff would increase. So there's kind of an inverse relationship between this number here and the number of employees you'll have at any given time. So if a server could only handle one transaction per hour, then you're gonna have obviously in this month here, 11 servers um, to handle those 11 transactions per hour. Um, but if you have five here, this is gonna be about two and some change on servers there. So that is the direct labor tab. The input other expenses tab is for entering all your operating expenses. Um, here we've got some examples, advertising, um, rent, accounting, um, professional services, and you have a couple of different ways you can enter those. You can enter the fixed amount. Um, so for example, rent is fixed at 4,000 per month. Um, and this will go up over time based on the inflation rate you've entered on the input assumptions tab here. Um, if you don't want it to go up over time, you can just hard code into these cells 4,000. Or you can set that inflation rate to zero. And then the other way you can enter things is through um, a percentage of revenue. So it can be a percentage of total revenue, a percentage of tap room and house. Um, this is house beer revenue, outside drink, outside food revenue, or wholesale revenue. Um, so for example, credit card fees, most of your customers nowadays are going to be paying with credit cards. And so Ma Visa and MasterCard are going to take some fees there. So you can enter that. And that'll be calculated based on a percentage of revenue because that obviously is directly tied to revenue. Um, you can enter your effective income tax rate on this tab, and that is a, a percentage of your net income, uh, of your profit, not of your revenue. And we always recommend speaking with a local tax professional to learn about tax laws in your area, because this is going to vary differently, um, very drastically depending on your location. The last tab here would be salaried employees and owner draw. Um, so if you are the owner of a corporation, you can essentially pay yourself dividends or draw funds out of the business to pay yourself. Um, and you can enter that here. Or you could pay yourself a salary. Um, some other examples of salaried employees might be managers or brewers. So make sure you don't put somebody here that also shows up on the direct labor tab because that'll be double counting them. So for example, if your bartenders are hourly, um, put them here. If you have a salaried bartender, then put them here, but make sure um, that you either take bartenders off or maybe your minimum employees would be one here if you've got one hourly and one salaried. So those are all the input tabs. And then the output tabs are gonna self-populate. So once you hit these green tabs, you don't have to do anything else except for maybe hide and unhide a couple rows. So um, the at a glance tab, some great graphs and charts, profit and loss at a glance, some of those key ratios that you often hear about. Um, we have a little break even analysis for you. So the point at which your cash balance exceeds any outstanding debt and hidden capital. Um, a chart of your expenses, your initial use of funds um, for opening the business, all here on this tab. And then we have the financial statements, an income statement, a cash flow statement, and a balance sheet. And we have them first in this um, annual format. So you're going to see the whole year for five years for the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet. And a note about our balance sheets here, um, one of the great benefits of purchasing a projection hub template is our balance sheets are always going to balance. So that's not an issue that you have to worry about. 
Um, it is really challenging when you're building your own financial model to get your balance sheet to balance right away. Um, it'll often take lots and lots of hours in Excel trying to get everything to balance. But our uh, financial models are, everything flows through right to these financial statements, so they balance on their own based on the inputs that you enter. So we've got those same three financial statements, the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet, but in the month-to-month -month formats as well. So you're going to see every single month for five years, um, which is going to help if you really want to boil down the data or look at any individual month. I think this is most important for a cash flow statement because you can see your ending cash balance for every month. So you can check to see if your cash balance ever goes negative, in which case you would need to um, either adjust your predictions or um, adjust the beginning loans or investment amounts to make sure you have enough cash to operate. So just a note about all of our templates here. Um, again, my name is Grace Sissa. I'm the developer of this template and I also work full time for Projection Hub. So if you have any questions and you reach out to us, you're likely going to be hearing from me directly. So feel free to reach out with any questions that you have. We also are happy to help you build these templates. Um, if you want us to fill it out for you, that is a service we offer. And we can also modify these templates. So if everything looks good, but you have a couple questions or need some modifications, um, we can modify it for you to make it fit your business a little better. Um, and we would be happy to do that. So never hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you can email us at support at projectionhub.com or go to our website for a live chat um, and we would be happy to help. So hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and please let us know if you have any questions.